Hurling is an outdoor team game of ancient Gaelic and Irish origin, administered by the Gaelic Athletic Association. The game has prehistoric origins, has been played for over 3,000 years, and is considered to be the world's fastest field sport. One of Ireland's native Gaelic games, it shares a number of features with Gaelic football, such as the field and goals, number of players, and much terminology. There is a similar game for women called Camogi. It shares a common Gaelic root with a sport of shinty which is played predominantly in Scotland. The objective of the game is for players to use a wooden stick called a hurley to hit a small ball called a slyota between the opponent's goalposts either over the crossbar for one point, or under the crossbar into a net guarded by a goalkeeper for one goal, which is equivalent to three points. The slyota can be caught in the hand and carried for not more than four steps, struck in the air, or struck on the ground with the hurley. It can be kicked or slapped with an open hand for short-range passing. A player who wants to carry the ball for more than four steps has to bounce or balance the slyota on the end of the stick and the ball can only be handled twice while in his possession. Provided that a player has at least one foot on the ground, a player may make a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder charge on an opponent who is in possession of the ball, or who is playing the ball, or when both players are moving in the direction of the ball to play it. No protective padding is worn by players. A plastic protective helmet with face guard is mandatory for all age groups, including senior level, as of 2010. The game has been described as a bastion of humility, with player names absent from jerseys and a player's number decided by his position on the field. Hurling is played throughout the world, and is popular among members of the Irish diaspora in North America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa and Argentina, though no professional league is in existence there. In many parts of Ireland however, hurling is a fixture of life. It has featured regularly in art forms such as film, music and literature. The final of the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship was listed in second place by CNN in its 10 sporting events you have to see live, after the Olympic Games and ahead of both the FIFA World Cup and UEFA European Football Championship. After covering the 1959 All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship final between Kilkenny and Waterford for BBC Television, English commentator Kenneth Wolstenham was moved to describe hurling as his second favourite sport in the world after his first love, soccer. In 2007, Forbes magazine described the media attention and population multiplication of Thelstown ahead of one of the game's annual provincial hurling finals as being the rough equivalent of 30 million Americans watching a regional lacrosse game. U.S. soldiers have also identified with the game's warrior ethos. Statistics A team comprises 15 players, or hurlers. The hurley is generally 79 a Euro 100 a cm in length. The ball, known as a slider, has a cork center and a leather cover. It is between 69 and 72 mm in diameter, and weighs between 110 and 120 g. The goalkeeper's hurley usually has a bows twice the size of other players' hurleys to provide some advantage against the fast-moving slyota. A good strike with a hurley can propel the ball over 150 a km per hour in speed and 110 meters in distance. A ball hit over the bar is worth one point. A ball that is hit under the bar is called a goal and is worth three points. As of 2010, all players must wear a helmet. Rules, playing field. A hurling pitch is similar in some respects to a rugby pitch but larger. The grass pitch is rectangular, stretching 130 a euro 145 meters long and 80 a euro 90 am wide. There are eight shaped goal posts at each end, formed by two posts which are usually 6 a euro 7 meters high, set 6.5 am apart, and connected 2.5 am above the ground by a crossbar. A net extending behind the goal is attached to the crossbar and lower goalposts. The same pitch is used for Gaelic football. The GAA, which organizes both sports, decided this to facilitate dual usage. Lines are marked at distances of 14 yards. 21 yards and 65 yards from each end line. Shorter pitches and smaller goals are used by youth teams. Teams. Teams consist of 15 players and they line out as below. 
The panel is made up of 24 Euro 30 players and five substitutions are allowed per game. An exception can now be made in the case of a blood substitute being necessary, ball. The ball consists of a cork core covered by two pieces of leather stitched together. Called a slider, it is a subject to strict regulations as regards its size, mass and composition. Helmets From January 1, 2010, the wearing of helmets with face guards became compulsory for hurlers at all levels. This or senior players follow the regulations already introduced in 2009 at minor and under 21 grades. The GAA hopes to significantly reduce the number of injuries by introducing the compulsory wearing of helmets with full face guards, both in training and matches. Hurlers of all ages, including those at nursery clubs when holding a hurley in their hand, must wear a helmet and face guard at all times. Match officials will be obliged to stop play if any player at any level appears on the field of play without the necessary standard of equipment. Timekeeping Senior inter-county matches last 70 minutes. All other matches last 60 minutes. For age groups of under 13 or lower, games may be shortened to 50 minutes. Timekeeping is at the discretion of the referee who adds on stoppage time at the end of each half. If a knockout game finishes in a draw, a replay is played. If a replay finishes in a draw, 20 minutes extra time is played. If the game is still tied, another replay is played. In club competitions, replays are increasingly not used due to the fixture backlogs caused. Instead, extra time is played after a draw, and if the game is still level after that it will go to a replay. Technical fouls, the following are considered technical fouls, picking the ball directly off the ground, throwing the ball, going more than four steps with the ball in the hand, catching the ball three times in a row without it touching the ground, putting the ball from one hand to the other, hand passing a goal, throwing the hurley, scoring. Scoring is achieved by sending the slyer to between the opposition's goalposts. The posts, which are at each end of the field, are H posts as in rugby football but with a net under the crossbar as in soccer. The posts are 6.4 m apart and the crossbar is 2.44 m above the ground. If the ball goes over the crossbar, a point is scored and a white flag is raised by an umpire. If the ball goes below the crossbar, a goal, worth three points, is scored, and a green flag is raised by an umpire. A goal must be scored by either a striking motion or by directly soloing the ball into the net. The goal is guarded by a goalkeeper. Scores are recorded in the format goal total a euro point total. For example, the 1997 All-Ireland final finished, Clare 0 a euro 20 Tipperary 2 a euro 13. Thus Clare won by 20 points to 213. 2 a euro 0 would be referred to as 2 goals, never 2 0. 0 a euro 0 is said no score. Tackling, players may be tackled but not struck by a one-handed slash of the stick. Exceptions are two-handed jabs and strikes. Jersey pulling, wrestling, pushing and tripping are all forbidden. There are several forms of acceptable tackling, the most popular being, the block, where one player attempts to smother an opposing player's strike by trapping the ball between his hurley and the opponent's swinging hurl. The hook, where a player approaches another player from a rear angle and attempts to catch the opponent's hurley with his own at the top of the swing. and the side pull, where two players running together for the slyota will collide at the shoulders and swing together to win the tackle and pull with extreme force. Restarting play, the match begins with the referee throwing the slyota in between the four midfielders on the halfway line. After an attacker has scored or put the ball wide of the goals, the goalkeeper may take a puck out from the hand at the edge of the small square. All players must be beyond the 20m line. After a defender has put the ball wide of the goals, an attacker may take a 65 from the 65m line level with where the ball went wide. It must be taken by lifting and striking. However, the ball must not be taken into the hand but struck whilst the ball is lifted. After a player has put the ball over the sideline, the other team may take a sideline cut at the point where the ball left the pitch. It must be taken from the ground. After a player has committed a foul, the other team may take a free at the point where the foul was committed. 
it must be taken by lifting and striking in the same style as the 65. After a defender has committed a foul inside the square, the other team may take a penalty from the ground from the center of the 20m line. Only the goalkeeper and two defenders may guard the goals. It must be taken by lifting and striking. If many players are struggling for the ball and no side is able to capitalize or gain control of the slayer to the referee may choose to throw the ball in between two opposing players. This is also known as a clash. Officials, a hurling match is watched over by eight officials, the referee, two linesmen, sideline official standby linesmen, four umpires, the referee is responsible for starting and stopping play, recording the score awarding frees and issuing penalty cards to players after offences. Linesmen are responsible for indicating the direction of line balls to the referee and also for conferring with the referee. The fourth official is responsible for overseeing substitutions, and also indicating the amount of stoppage time when the players substituted using an electronic board. The umpires are responsible for judging the scoring. They indicate to the referee whether a shot was wide, a 65M puck, a point, or a goal. Contrary to popular belief within the association, all officials are not obliged to indicate any misdemeanors to the referee, but are in fact only permitted to inform the referee of violent conduct they have witnessed which has occurred without the referee's knowledge. A linesman umpire is not permitted to inform the referee of technical fouls such as a third time in the hand where a player catches the ball for a third time in succession after soloing or an illegal pickup of the ball. Such decisions can only be made at the discretion of the referee. History Hurling is older than the recorded history of Ireland. It is thought to predate Christianity, having come to Ireland with the Celts. It has been a distinct Irish pastime for at least 2,000 years. The earliest written references to the sport in Brion law date from the 5th century. In the book by Seamus King A History of Hurling there is a reference from Irish verbal history of hurling as far back as the 1200 BC being played in Tara Cometh. Hurling is related to the games of Shinty that is played primarily in Scotland, Camag on the Isle of Man and Bandy that was played formerly in England and Wales. The tale of the tar in Bar Cubed Cleon describes the hero Karshu Lane playing hurling at Emain Macca. Similar tales are told about Finn Mac Cumhull and the Fianna, his legendary warrior band. Recorded references to hurling appear in many places such as the 14th century statutes of Kilkenny and a 15th century grave slab survives in Inishowen, County Donegal. Hurling was said to be played in ancient times by teams representing neighboring villages. Villages would play games involving hundreds of players, which would last several hours or even days. The 18th century is frequently referred to as the Golden Age of Hurling. This was when members of the Anglo-Irish landed gentry kept teams of players on their estates and challenged each other's teams to matches for the amusement of their tenants. One of the first modern attempts to standardize the game with a formal, written set of rules came with the foundation of the Irish Hurling Union at Trinity College Dublin in 1879. It aimed to draw up a code of rules for all clubs in the union and to foster that manly and noble game of hurling in this, its native country. The founding of the Gaelic Athletic Association in 1884 in Hayes Hotel, Thurles, Company Tipperary, turned around a trend of terminal decline by organizing the game around a common set of written rules. In 1891 the first All-Ireland hurling final was played with Kerry winning the championship. However, the 20th century saw Cork, Kilkenny and Tipperary dominate hurling with each of these counties winning more than 20 All-Ireland titles each. Wexford. Waterford, Clare, Limerick, Offaly, Dublin, and Galway were also strong hurling counties during the 20th century. As hurling entered the new millennium, it has remained Ireland's second most popular sport. An extended qualifier system resulted in a longer All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship, but Cork, Tipperary and Kilkenny have come to dominate the championship and some argue that the All-Ireland has become less competitive. Paper play remains controversial and the Gaelic Players Association continues to grow in strength. The inauguration of the Christie Ring Cup and Nicky Rackard Cup gave new championships and an opportunity to play in Croke Park to the weaker county teams. 
further dissemination of the championship structure was completed in 2009 with the addition of the Lorimo Cup to make it a four-tier championship. Hurling at the Olympic Games Hurling was an unofficial sport at the 1904 Summer Olympics in St. Louis, Missouri, in the United States. In the final, Fenian FC. USA beat in as Vales. This was the only time hurling was in the Olympics. International. Although many hurling clubs exist worldwide, only Ireland has a national team. It and the Scotland Shinty team have played for many years with modified match rules. The match is the only such international competition. However, competition at club level has been going on around the world since the late 19th century thanks to emigration from Ireland, and the strength of the game has ebbed and flowed along with emigration trends. Nowadays, growth in hurling is noted in continental Europe, Australia, and North America. Argentina Irish immigrants began arriving in Argentina in the 19th century. The earliest reference to hurling in Argentina dates from the late 1880s in Mercedes, Buenos Aires. However, the game was not actively promoted until 1900, when it came to the attention of author and newspaper man William Bulfin. Under Bulfin's patronage, the Argentine Hurling Club was formed on July 15, 1900, leading to teams being established in different neighborhoods of Buenos Aires and the surrounding farming communities. Games of hurling were played every weekend until 1914 and received frequent coverage even from Argentina's Spanish-language newspapers, such as La Nacia Cuban. After the outbreak of World War I, however, it became almost impossible to obtain hurlers from Ireland. An attempt was made to use native Argentine mountain ash, but it proved too heavy and lacking in pliability. Although the game was revived after the end of the war, the golden age of Argentine hurling had passed. World War II finally brought the era to its close. In the aftermath of the Second World War, immigration from Ireland slowed to a trickle. In addition, native-born Irish Argentines assimilated into the local community. The last time that hurling was played in Argentina was in 1980, when the El Ingus Hurling Club conducted a three-week tour of the country and played matches at several locations. Since 2009, with the realization of several summer's camps and the visit of the All-Stars in December, hurling returned to be a frequent activity at the hurling club, where many boys and young men have since been trained and taught to play. Even the hurling club are invited to participate. Hurling Festival is organized within the gathering events organized by Ellingus. This team will be present in September 2013 in the city of Galway. The team consists of 21 players from hockey and rugby teams. Many have contributed to the return hurling as an activity in the club. As an example we can name Alejandro Loyo Wade, Johnny Wade, Barbie, Cecilia and Irene Scully, David Ganley, Dickie McAllister, Eduardo Cabrera Punter, Hernan Magrini Scully. Several Irish have participated in many opportunities to work with the skills and education, Jonathan Lynch, Kevin O'Connors and Michael Connery, who currently works with the team's training to participate in the Earl Ingus International Hurling Festival. Australia and New Zealand The earliest reference to hurling in Australia is related in the book Sketches of Gary Owen. On July 12, 1844, a match took place at Batman's Hill in Melbourne as a counterpoint to a march by the Orange Order. Reportedly, the hurling match attracted a crowd of 500 Irish immigrants while the Orange March shivered out of existence. Several hurling clubs existed in Victoria in the 1870s including Melbourne, Collingwood, Upper Yarra, Richmond and Geelong. In 1885, a game between two Sydney-based teams took place before a crowd of over 10,000 spectators. Reportedly, the contest was greatly enjoyed despite the fact that one newspaper dubbed the game two degrees safer than war. Arden Street Oval in North Melbourne was used by Irish immigrants during the 1920s. The game in Australasia is administered by Australasia GAA. Britain Hurling was brought to Britain by Irish immigrants in the 19th century. The game is administered by British GAA. Warwickshire compete against Irish teams in the Lorimo Cup. London is the only non-Irish team to have won the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship and after winning the 2012 Christie Ring Cup gained the right to contest the Liam McCarthy Cup in 2013.
The first ever hurling game played in the Scottish Highlands was played at Easter 2012 between CLG Mike Heal Breathmatch and Fur Lad, an Ulster select of Gay Ligoyri, as part of the Omain Chomsil Festival, Na Breathnay coming out victorious. South Africa Soldiers who served in the Irish Brigade during the Anglo Boer War are believed to have played the game on the veldt. Immigrants from County Wicklow who had arrived to work in the explosives factory in Umberg in Twinney, KwaZulu Natal formed a Team C. 1915 a Euro 1916. A major burst of immigration in the 1920s led to the foundation of the Transvaal Hurling Association in Johannesburg in 1928. Games were traditionally played in a pitch on the site of the modern-day Johannesburg Central Railway Station every Easter Sunday after Mass. In 1932, a South African hurling team sailed to Ireland to compete in the Tailtian Games, where they carried a banner donated by a convent of Irish nuns in Cape Town. On their arrival, they were personally received by the Tower Sage at the time, a Pamela Moan de Valera. South African hurling continued to prosper until the outbreak of World War II, which caused immigration from Ireland to cease and made it impossible to import equipment. Games of hurling and Gaelic football were occasionally sponsored by the Christian Brothers schools in Boaksburg and Pretoria well into the 1950s. Both games have all but ceased to be played. North America References to hurling on the North American continent date from the 1780s in modern-day Canada concerning immigrants from County Waterford and County Kilkenny, and also, in New York City. After the end of the American Revolution, references to hurling cease in American newspapers until the aftermath of the potato famine when Irish people moved to America in huge numbers, bringing the game with them. Newspaper reports from the 1850s refer to occasional matches played in San Francisco, Hoboken, and New York City. The first game of hurling played under GAA rules outside of Ireland was played on Boston Common in June 1886. In 1888, there was an American tour by 50 Gaelic athletes from Ireland, known as the American Invasion. This created enough interest among Irish Americans to lay the groundwork for the North American GAA. By the end of 1889, almost a dozen GAA clubs existed in America, many of them in and around New York City, Philadelphia, and Chicago. Later, clubs were formed in Boston, Cleveland, and many other centers of Irish America. Concord, New Hampshire has its state's only hurling team, sponsored by the Barley House Pub. In 1910, 22 hurlers, composed of an equal number from Chicago and New York, conducted a tour of Ireland, where they played against the county teams from Kilkenny, Tipperary, Limerick, Dublin, and Wexford. Traditionally, hurling was a game played by Irish immigrants and discarded by their children. Many American hurling teams took to raising money to import players directly from Ireland. In recent years, this has changed considerably with the advent of the Internet. Outside of the traditional North American GAA cities of New York, Boston, Chicago, and San Francisco, clubs are springing up in other places where they consist of predominantly American-born players who bring a new dimension to the game and actively seek to promote it as a mainstream sport, especially Joe Maher, a leading expert at the sport in Boston. Currently, the Milwaukee Hurling Club, with 300 members, is the largest hurling club in the world outside of Ireland which is made of all Americans and very few Irish immigrants. The St. Louis Gaelic Athletic Club was established in 2002 and has expanded its organization to an eight-team hurling league in the spring and six-team Gaelic football league in the fall. They also have a 30-member Camogie League. St. Louis has won two national championships in junior C hurling, as well as two national championships in junior D Gaelic football. The Indianapolis Hurling Club began in 2002, then reformed in 2005. In 2008, the Indy Hurling Club won the Junior C National Championship. In 2011, Indy had seven club teams and sent a Junior B, Junior C and Camogie team to nationals. Hurling continues to grow in popularity with teams now in Charleston, South Carolina, Orlando, Florida, Augusta, Georgia, Greenville, South Carolina, Indianapolis, Indiana, Worcester, Massachusetts, Cavalis, Oregon, Concord, New Hampshire, Portland, Maine, Madison, Wisconsin, 
Hampton Roads, VA and Hartford, Connecticut. The GAA have also begun to invest in American college students with university teams springing up at University of Connecticut, Stanford, California, Purdue, Indiana University, University of Montana and other schools. On January 31, 2009, the first ever U.S. collegiate hurling match was held between California and Stanford, organized by the newly formed California Collegiate Gaelic Athletic Association. California won the match by one point, as well as the most recent best of three college cup, two matches to one. On Memorial Day weekend of 2011, the first ever national collegiate GAA championship was played. The Indiana University Hurling Club won all matches of the tournament, and won by four points in the championship final to be crowned the first ever U.S. National Collegiate Champions. Major Hurling Competitions. All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship, Connacht Senior Hurling Championship, Leinster Senior Hurling Championship, Munster Senior Hurling Championship, Ulster Senior Hurling Championship. National Hurling League, Christy Ring Cup, Nicky Rackard Cup, All-Ireland Senior Club Hurling Championship, Leinster Senior Club Hurling Championship. All-Ireland Under-21 Hurling Championship, Leinster Under-21 Hurling Championship. All-Ireland Minor Hurling Championship, Poc Fada, Far Copyright Eel Nau Gale, Composite Rules Shinty Euro Hurling, see also, Hurling Records in Ireland, Shinty, Lacrosse, Hurling in Popular Culture, Notes. References, King, Seamus J. A. History of Hurling. Dublin, Gill and Macmillan. ISBN A978-0-7171. 3938-5. OCLC A61477832 A. King, Seamus J. The Clash of the Ash in Foreign Fields, Hurling Abroad. Beuchelf, Cashel, Company. Tipperary, S.J. King. ISBN A978-0-9533584. OCLC A 40,820,752A, External Links, Playing Rules, Constitution and Rules of the GAA, Match Regulations 2008, Official Website of the Gaelic Athletic Association, Slyo to Hurling Magazine, and Fear Rua Euro The GAA Unplugged, Video Introduction to Hurling, Continental Youth Championships, A Brief History of the Argentine Hurling Club, Hurling in Australia and New Zealand, Gaelic football, hurling, our Irish passions, National Geographic news, hurling, men's fitness magazine, selection of hurling photos from Sports File Sports Photo Agency, KilkennyCats.com hurling forum, Seamus J. King, author website, What is Hurling, YouTube, 30 Irishmen with Schiller's Popular Mechanics, March 1954, PPA 146 a Euro 147. In praise of a Euro hurling, the courage and commitment of Cork and Clare were a shining example of sportsmanship, The Guardian Editorial.